Now we've got a hard surface model we've created in 3D Studio Max, and we want to go and do some high frequency sculpting, just like nicks and scratches, and add some surface quality to it, maybe some metal, rust, whatever, uh, possibly some, some inlays and things like that. But in order to do that, because we've created a hard surface model, it's not ideal for sculpting. And it's actually pretty difficult to set them up in a way that makes much sense without having super, super high density models. So what we're going to do is actually, we're going to get our, our hard surface model, send it over to ZBrush. Um, we're going to make a Dynamesh version of that model after duplicating it, and then reproject all the detail that we had in that good hard surface mesh that we had built um, in order to have essentially the same exact surfaces, nice clean shapes, but also have a sculptable mesh. It's a pretty straightforward process, but there are there's like a couple little things that you're going to want to know about. So our first one, we're going to jump into our Max file, take a look at our model, and while we're in Max, you can see, here's my model, my low poly version of the hard surface mesh. You can see there's a lot of very long polygons in order to keep this a clean surface all the way through. You see when I turn on my, my mesh smooth, um, this model gets pretty pretty clean. You can see the, the uh, blade itself is pretty flat. There's a nice roll into it on the edge. The, the edges aren't necessarily round or flat. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a curve into this. Uh, the hilt itself gets some interesting planes that are a little bit harder to do. To get, a, to get that clean of a surface, you have to fidget a lot in ZBrush. So we kind of want to use each program to its strengths. In this case, Max, I can make some really nice um, ins and outs where it's tight, sharp edges up here. You can see it rolls off into a nice smooth fall off in here. Um, simple, simple shape changes down here on the the uh, the pommel. Pretty straightforward. But what, one thing we want to make sure we do when we go into ZBrush is we want to make sure that our model is subdivided by Max first because Max respects open edges. Where you'll see if I go and look at my model here the actual handle is just a wide open edge. And if I take that into ZBrush, we're going to get griefed pretty hard by the way that ZBrush subdivides. So check this out. That's that's what ZBrush wants to do. It wants to slack in real crazy hard on all of the edges here. So, you know, the further you go, the worse that gets. That's really bad for us. So what we're going to do is just import this model, actually pre-subdivide it. So we're going to subdivide this up to the level that we think is looking nice. Uh, my command panel is not here. Oh, I guess we can say right here. So I'm going to set my iterations to four in this case. Just get a nice, low, nice small polygons. Make sure um, we're not relying on any of the smooth group performance in Max to make this look nice. So let's hit go Z. Send it over to Mac, or so ZBrush. It'll take a second and then we'll be in there. So now we have this model in here. You'll see the actual uh, geometry in here. It's totally unsculptable. Check this out. If I turn off my wireframe, just try and use Damien Standard or something similar. Do some scratches on it, right? That's pretty tragic. I think we can all agree on that. And this model is, let's see how many polygons it is right now. Okay, it's only 100,000. We can subdivide this a couple more times, but even then, you'll see the polygons are going to be real sketchy. That's not going to do much for you. So all this stuff is basically worthless to sculpt on. But it did give us a nice roll in and roll out. Undo all those. Subdivide a couple times again. And then we'll take a look at this with a slightly different material. So you'll see surface quality is very different than if we were just modeled this um, and subdivided it straight up. This is a base model. So we're a lot further along already with the shape. So all we need to do right now is take this model, I'm going to duplicate it in the subtool menu. 
So now we got two of that bad boy. Uh, I'm going to rename this to uh, to be labeled as, so just so I know, this is going to be my Dynamesh. And then we're just going to go straight down to the bottom, down into geometry. And you'll see Dynamesh here. All we want, I'm going to turn off my other model first. All we want is a mesh that conforms to the surface of what's there. We don't need it to be super high detail. And in fact, the lower detail we have it, the better off we'll be, because then we can use the performance of the smooth brush at a lower resolution and get a much faster uh, and more destructive smooth. So if I just hit Dynamesh at uh, 128, that will not freeze subdivisions. Just give me what you got. If you take a look here, turn this nonsense material off again. Now we have a low poly model that, or lower poly model than the original one, has the same important shapes, but then you'll see it's almost sculptable here, like even at this resolution. Um, you can go up a little higher with that, with the resolution value if you wanted to. I generally want to stick as low as possible because I want to be able to do big smooths like this. I want to knock out any burrs on the model, like at the lowest possible value. It also lets us make some pretty big changes to the surface while we're in ZBrush. But really, the process is actually pretty straightforward. So we've we've got our model. So now we have a a, a Unimesh uh, sword. We can go ahead and turn off our Dynamesh. Now we've just got a mesh. This is it. This is our model. Um, we'll divide this up. We want to make sure that we have enough resolution so that when we get in there, maybe use our Damien standard again at a nice small size, we can get a nice cut out of it, a nice scratch. Um, let's see what our subdivision is at right now, how many polys we have. Uh, it's 1.3, we can go another one. We'll do one more. Um, and now we have a pretty high res model. Can get some pretty high detailed sketchy stuff in here. Uh, let's see, let's just go ahead and get a clay brush. We'll put an alpha on it for a second and just drag it on. So we can get a lot of detail out of this, if you can tell. That's pretty respectable for the size of the scale of this model. So now our last process is actually just to turn on the original mesh, which it has, which has the separate elements on the unsculptable surface. Uh, I'm going to undo past my uh, the mess I've made. Um, I'm just going to select the new Dynamesh model and go down into the bottom of Subtool. And we're going to say project all. What's, what this is going to do is basically just saran wrap, vacuum seal, do some fun magic, and project all of the detail that was in the original mesh into this new Dynamesh model. Uh, and now we'll have three or four subdivisions on that Dynamesh mesh. Dynamesh mesh. That sounded real smart. And we'll be able to get all of the detail we could want and do all of the possible patterns. So now we have the full-on high-res, but with a set of polygons that we can use. You can see it's a little jaggy here, but that's nothing we can't quickly kick out with uh, a little bit of smooth. And since this isn't the most, you know, we could, we could always step up another level if we wanted um, and project at that level. Apparently my computer did not like that plan, so one second. But yeah, so you know this sort of thing can happen. Um, but the things that are important are the the lighting planes on the blade, things like this uh, the handguard, um, getting in all these little bits, and on top of this we can just go start, you know, masking in. Oh. Let's turn on our XYZ disaster mirroring. Should give me all four. Oh. I think I may have some. Oh, there we go. So we'll go X, XZ. We'll have four different directions of symmetry. So we can just start drawing in things like 
inlays and adding another level of detail to this that we wouldn't normally have done if we were just doing a hard surface mesh. Or we might have done that in Crazy Bump and not got quite the same effect. So we get a little mask in there. Oops. So we can continue just invert my mask here. I'm gonna step down one level real quick. It's pretty straightforward to, to build this sort of mask. And then we can do simple, simple things like inflating. Actually, this is kind of silly because we actually don't have the proper masking setup. I can sort of screw this up. It's fine. So we can go through and mask out bits like this, smooth that transition, and then you know do inflate or something like this. And a deformation. Inflate. Try negative one. Just gonna pop that in. So we have a little bit, I mean, this is real, real budget looking, but then you can see if I wanted to go through and start adding, you know, in some blade damage, things like this, I'll cover that in another video, but you can see now I can actually sculpt across all of this if I'm so inclined. King, king, king. But that's it. That's really the whole process. And I, once you get down to a level where you start giving a, believ a believable surface to a model, you're going to have much more successful... Uh, and high quality meshes, so that's the next step for you. This has been Joe Pickup with so much monsters dot com.